Two weeks ago, a new artificial intelligence program called ChatGPT made its debut online. This project from the OpenAI Research Lab can write essays and carry on convincing written conversation. So does ChatGPT represent a breakthrough that will spawn new businesses, or is it more of a gimmick? John Fort is here to weigh in. John, enlighten us. What's up? Well, Becky, I mean, ChatGPT is a disruptor and a game changer for business communication. Uh, this communication, the ability to marshal facts, organize ideas, stir passions, it's now something software can do. Computers have achieved a sort of creativity. So how do we get here? Well, seven years ago, Sam Altman, Elon Musk, and others pooled more than a billion dollars to research AI that benefits humanity. And then three years ago, Microsoft threw in another billion. This is important because ChatGPT comes out in the same year that OpenAI released DALI 2, which generates digital images that seem to be photographs or drawings or paintings created by a human. So what's the business application? Well, my bet is on sales first. Soon, a company's most effective emailed sales overtures will be training material for a chat GPT-like bot that scours the potential customer's website, crafts a custom pitch. Humans will just swoop in to close the deal. Uh, another use, a bot should be able to look at sales and inventory data and quickly craft a narrative that highlights trends that a human wouldn't quickly find. Conversational AI is a tool to help us learn faster, apply it in the right way, and there are billions to be made, Becky. All right, what about chat GPT's accuracy problems? Does it know how to say that it doesn't know something? Well, huh. on the other hand, chat GPT is already getting overhyped. How do I know? I tried it. I asked it to write this on the other hand segment, and I'm happy to report it did a horrible job. <laughs> and then I asked it to write a Shakespearean sonnet, and it performed like a gifted eighth grader who doesn't quite understand iambic pentameter yet. So here's the thing. The problem isn't that ChatGPT is imperfect, aren't we all? The problem is it betrays zero self-doubt, so and it doesn't answer. show its work. As a source of information, it's a bit of a black box, unlike Wikipedia, which shows you references, or Google, which shows you links. At least with those, it's easier to assess the quality of information you're getting. ChatGPT has value in that it commoditizes bland communication, in the same way that early business websites eliminated low-level stockbrokers and travel agents. But for it to reach that level of business impact, where it can disrupt today's information giants, it needs to be more transparent. Ironically, the parlor trick aspect of ChatGPT requires that it pretend to be an expert, but its value will be limited until it gets better at asking for help with what it doesn't know. Becky. It's just like an obnoxious, you know, self-confident jerk confident. like we all know. Yeah, like, kind of like, I mean, but kind of like this segment. But isn't it? I <laughs> If this is just, we're just in the beginning. Yeah. We're like in the first and inning. You're asking for a sauna. I'm, I'm imagining in six I mean, in six months from that's now, mean. they'll give you links. They'll give you footnotes. You'll have all of that yeah. stuff. And but that's a design issue more than an artificial intelligence issue. I and I think they, the they question did is, it that way. yeah, will they design it to be transparent? And that might require and why don't they some. Want them? Well, you you actually think they don't want it to be transparent? Well, I think right now it's pretending to be human, and that's part of the. Part of the trick, part of the joy is, oh wow, look what it's given me. I almost can't distinguish this from the real thing. And if but it's I think offering you a bunch of links and blah, 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 it sounds like a, well, like a Google chat instead of. I would imagine if you were sending out the, sale, the, the sales notice, it would generate the thing for you, it would put the footnotes in for you, you could then judge whether it's actually any good or not, and the information's right. And if you, therefore, then chose, this is what you do in the UI of it, but that you, that you want to send it out to all your clients and make it look like you wrote it, and, and you feel comfortable with all the citations, you remove the citations, and then it's the, you know, right? That, but that I think it'll like be on work, you, though, not on. But I think that sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Like, you know, to go back and, and do some of the same things. You want this. It's just like when, you know, they're saying in some of these chats, if you're online doing retail or anything, you know, hey, can we help you with something? You know it's not a real person. They try as much as they can. They even give them a stupid name. Hi, I'm Melanie. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. you're not Melanie, no, you're, not. you're the you're bot. Yeah. So, and, and I guess my other question is, I, it's probably going to get way better from here. It is scary when you can't distinguish, though. When it, at a, in a certain design, I think better actually is worse because it gets closer to being right. Right. Uh, but the way these things are trained, there's actually a ton of data going into it, which is great. We need a degree of confidence. Right. right? But don't you think, and that, I would imagine there will be an enterprise version of this for folks that will offer degrees of confidence around specific things and might highlight something that will tell you our degree of confidence is 100%, our degree of confidence is 
you know, I hope 40 percent, so. and then you'll make some choices. I hope so. Don't you think? Well, well, well I, that's the part I don't understand. I would our think our I, history with this sort of thing is sometimes we let the technology get way down the road before we discover. Oh well, you know, like social media connecting people, there are downsides to that. Maybe we should have designed start, and mitigated. You know, let's start with thank you cards. Sympathy, sympathy, sympathy <laughs> My kids would love that. And you know, it's pretending to be human, aren't we all? Sort of, uh, at times. Some I mean, it's more than others. Uh, yeah. Keep for yourself. <laughs> I just say I, it's got a lot of it. a sonnet. That's what you start with. I, I, I mean, come you on. You know how hard it is to write a, a sonnet. Maybe some hype. I do. Or something. I yeah. do. I enjoy. It's sonnet pretty writing. amazing. Let's be honest. It is. It oh is. yeah, it's it amazing. Is. It is amazing. And a little, and a little you know, scary. Yeah, and, and there's a handwriting stuff thing too, right? You can yeah, don't you have that? The handwriting thing? Yeah, yeah but that company sadly went out of business. Did it really? It did. See, it I'm was doing, all, it actually, it's not. I'm excited. It was acquired by 3M, who then shut, shut it, it down. Yeah. Thank you notes and handwriting program. Damn. Wow. Huh? Yep. <laughs> Tending to be human. Christmas cards. <laughs>